Hello and welcome to this segment of the TI training module. My name is Andrew Smith and I'm the training manager here at NTI. In this segment we'll cover the connecting the gas line and the combustion analysis. When installing the gas line and properly adjusting the combustion of the unit during startup there are three tools that are required to properly perform the work. You will need a multimeter that is capable of reading microamps as this is required in order to read the flame signal strength. You also need a manometer in order to measure gas line pressure and a combustion analyzer to do a combustion analysis to ensure the gas valve is properly adjusted to the proper CO2 and CO levels. When installing the gas line, the line enters the boiler at the bottom of the cabinet. Your main line should include a shutoff valve with a T-type handle that needs to be listed with a nationally recognized testing lab. You should also include a drip leg and ideally the section between the main pipe and the union should use flexible gas pipe provided local codes allow it. There are a couple reasons why we promote the use of flexible gas line. The first reason is that when using rigid piping over to the union you need to make sure it lines up almost exactly. If the two pipes do not line up at the union the additional strain placed on the gas line by connecting them gets transferred directly to the gas valve which is attached to the blower. Over time, this can lead to blower vibration and could result in damaged components. The use of flexible gas pipe gives the installer a margin of error in that it doesn't really matter if the pipes line up or not. The second reason we promote the use of flexible gas pipe is that it's very important to make sure the gas pipes are well supported. The gas valve and blower can't support the weight of the gas piping, and flexible gas pipe helps make sure the pipes are supported. So if you're using rigid pipe in the area that we show flexible gas pipe in the picture on this slide, then you need to make sure the pipes are well supported and that the two pipes line up at the union. Remember, you always need to use rigid piping inside the cabinet of the boiler. Another thing to consider is that you're planning your installation in order to place the gas line where it won't interfere with the vent pipe or with future servicing of the unit, such as the removal of the gas valve. The sizing of the gas pipe needs to be done according to installation codes and local codes and it'll depend on things like the total length of the pipe, the number of fittings, the type of gas being used, and the number and BTU capacity of all the appliances in the house. The gas pipe needs to be large enough that it properly services all the appliances in the home and there shouldn't be a noticeable drop in line pressure or manifold pressure when any appliance or combination of appliances lights or is running. When the unit is running, the line pressure should be 7 inches for natural gas with an acceptable range from 4 inches to 9 inches. The propane target is 11 inches and the acceptable range is from 9 to 12. Line pressure of 14 inches or more, or half PSI, can result in damage to the valve and could result in a leaking valve, which in turn could result in fire or explosion. So if you ever read a line pressure of 14 inches or above, disconnect the gas line and adjust the pressure at the regulator. The way to perform the line pressure test is to start by turning off all the gas coming into the boiler. When you look at the gas valve from the right hand side of the unit, you will see three adjustment screws. The one on the top right is the line pressure port. You want to loosen the line pressure port by turning the screw one complete turn counterclockwise. You can then place the hose from your manometer over the line pressure port and turn the gas to the boiler back on. You can then take a line pressure reading. It's recommended to leave the manometer in place through the rest of the installation as you'll need it later to monitor line pressure during ignition. All TI models come from the factory set up to be used with natural gas, but they can be field converted for use with propane. We include a conversion kit with every boiler, and in the kit we include the torque spit required to remove the gas valve from the venturi tube, an orifice to be placed between the gas valve and the venturi, and a sticker to indicate the unit has been converted to LP. It is very important that any unit being used with LP be properly converted. It's not enough to simply perform a combustion test. The proper orifice needs to be inserted. If you are converting a boiler to LP for a new installation, it's best to do it before it's been hung on the wall. The three screws that need to be removed are located on the bottom of the gas valve, so it's a little easier to get at them if you do it before it goes on the wall. When converting a unit that's already been installed, you need to make sure the power and gas are turned off and disconnect the air inlet from the boiler. You then need to disconnect the wiring from the gas valve. To bank the conversion, you will see three screws that attach the venturi tube on the air inlet to the gas valve. Using the torque spit included in the kit, 
remove the three screws while taking care to hold on to the gas valve. This will allow you to remove the venturi from the gas valve and you will see a rubber gasket. Place the orifice in the rubber gasket and taking care to make sure the gasket is properly placed then reattach the venturi with the three screws you previously removed. NTI recommends performing a combustion test on every installation. It is mandatory when a unit has been converted to LP or when a unit is being installed at altitude, but it's good practice to perform a combustion analysis on every install, and in many areas the local codes require it to be done. When you look at the gas valve from the right hand side of the boiler you will see the three screws we discussed earlier when talking about the line pressure port. The larger screw that can be found below the other two is the gas input screw and is used to adjust the amount of gas the valve allows to pass through when it's open. The input screw is a multiple turn needle valve and it is about 17 complete revolutions to go from fully closed to fully open and vice versa. When the screw is loosened it allows more gas to pass through the valve. When it is tightened, less gas passes through. So turning the screw clockwise will decrease the flow of gas and counterclockwise increases it. The typical adjustment for natural gas is less than one full turn either in or out and for LP it is generally somewhere between one and three complete turns. Setting the CO2 should be done with the boiler running at high fire which is a gas input value of 240. Perform a combustion analysis at high fire and read the CO2 level. Ideally you want the CO2 reading to be 9% when using natural gas and 10% for propane. If the reading is already there, then no adjustment is necessary. If the CO2 reading is too low, increasing the amount of gas, or turning the input screw counterclockwise, will increase the CO2 number. Slowly turn the input screw until the CO2 reading settles at 9%. If the reading is too high, the process is the same except you need to reduce the amount of gas, so you need to turn the input screw to the right, or clockwise, to tighten it. Once the CO2 has been set at the appropriate level, which is either 9% for natural gas or 10% for propane, you then need to check the CO reading while still at high fire. This reading is actually the most important reading you'll take for the safe operation of the boiler. If the CO number is over 140, then slowly reduce the amount of gas until the reading is below 140, or the CO2 is reduced to 8%. If the CO2 reading is below 8% and the CO is still above 140, you'll need to contact NTI for technical assistance. Once you've completed the readings at high fire and you've confirmed that the CO2 and CO readings are both at acceptable levels, you then need to repeat the process at minimum fan speed. The CO readings should be less than it was at high fire and the CO2 readings should be at least as high as at high fire but shouldn't exceed 9.5% for natural gas or 10.5% for propane. NTI is no longer producing the TI-400, but we'll cover it quickly here in case you run into one in the field. The process for adjusting combustion is exactly the same as the other models, but the layout is quite different because it uses a different gas valve. When you look at the gas valve, you'll see two ports, and the line pressure port is the one toward the right-hand side of the valve. The port over the input screw is the manifold port and doesn't need to be used. The input screw works a little differently than the other models in that it isn't a needle valve but a geared ball valve with a 4 to 1 ratio. That means that four turns will take the valve back to its original position and it takes two turns to go from completely open to completely closed and vice versa. The typical adjustment for the 400 is less than a quarter of a turn. Once you've completed the combustion analysis there is one more quick test to make sure everything is operating properly. Make sure the boiler is not running and turn on all the other gas appliances in the house. Then go back to the boiler and get it to fire and it should be able to light properly and remain lit at high fire. And this is why I mentioned keeping your manometer hose connected because the line pressure needs to stay within the acceptable range when all appliances are running. And once you've confirmed this is the case, you can turn off all the other appliances, turn off the gas to the boiler, remove your manometer tube, then make sure you securely tighten the screw on the line pressure port. Once that is done, do a leak test to make sure everything is properly sealed. And that concludes this segment. On behalf of everyone at NTI, thank you very much for your interest in our products and I hope this segment was helpful for you. Thank you.